You know, one of the things I get asked time and time again, and I get asked it by practice owners, and I see it in the eyes of veterinarians, technicians, nurses, team members, all over the world working in veterinary practices. But the, the, the question that you get asked is, what happened to resilience and how do we help people grow resilience? And there's there's so many facets to this. That you just couldn't possibly answer it in one short uh, blog or audio clip. One of the things that occurs to me is that, uh, that you know there are there are multiple parts to resilience. Some of it's just about experiencing, pushing through the suck, embracing the suck, and coming out the other side, and realizing that the suck wasn't quite as bad as you thought it was, and the next time around you will be able to do this thing. But some of it's actually about sharing. And when I think back to my career, what was it that was really different about my career that was incredibly helpful? that got me through a lot of the tough times. It was connection. It was, it was the ability to connect with and enjoy the company of fellow human beings. And that meant colleagues, it meant clients, but it also meant peers. It meant people who were also going through the same thing that I was going through. Now that was a lot harder 20 years ago when I was in practice. And in the, on the face of it, it should be easier now because of social media. But I, I don't think it is. I think there's a couple of things that, that, that we absolutely need to be very, very careful of here. The first thing is, and I've said this before, we are analog beings in a digital world. I don't care if you were immersed and you, know, you, you were born and given a phone at day one and you could interact on your device. Does that make you more familiar with it? Yes, I'm sure. Does that protect you or insulate you somehow from the anxiety inducing effects of being on a device? No, it does not. And, and we know that people who are exposed to ongoing negative emotions are less resilient. I.e., when you spend more time on your device, your resilience goes down. So you have to be very careful about what it is that you're doing on your device and how long you're spending on that device. So I think that's point one. Be mindful about what you use, use your device for. Point two of connection is that you will grow to be the mean of the five, six, seven, I don't know how many people, but the people that you spend the most time around, that, that, that you pay attention to their viewpoints on the world and that you let their thoughts percolate and infuse your thoughts. So you have to be very intentional about who you spend that time with. If you spend that time with people who are not supportive or don't make you feel good, then don't be surprised when you don't feel good about yourself. And again, you're going to generate negative emotions over a chronic period of time that is going to damage your resilience. But the most important thing is that think of this as like a spider web. As you fall through your day, uh, and, and I don't mean literally, or uh, perhaps I mean literally and figuratively sometimes. But as we, as we travel through our day, sometimes we are going to fall and what we need is this safety net. Now the safety net doesn't stop the thing happening, but it's our support structure so, so we don't fall off the cliff and it, and it bounces us back up. That safety net are the group of people, your support network that you can call when you're having a tough moment, that you can spend time connecting with in person, much harder right now because of COVID. And I, when I think back to my early career, what was present and what was not present? Social media was not present. I, I went through the same course, largely, that you probably went through. Slight differences, but the emphasis was very much on the clinical and we didn't have a lot of professional skills training. So we didn't have social media. What I did have was, a, was an incredibly tight group of friends and five of us got jobs within a five mile radius of each other. Uh, which meant that we were able not just to pick up the phone and speak with each other, but we were going to rugby training together or we were going out very, very frequently at the weekends. We were hanging out together. And that didn't, you know, that didn't mean we didn't have really difficult days. We did, we had super difficult days. But what it meant was that we were sharing the pain and we were sharing the stories. And actually, they became funny. 
when we thought about it, even if we were having a tough moment or a client complaint or something didn't go well, we had an outlet through which to share and a support network. Add that onto your family, your wider friends. But that core group of people who get what you're going through, you can weather an awful lot more when you are going through this thing together and you're sharing that experience. And, it, and you grow closer as a group as well. And I, and I wonder if there's something in there as well. So number one, be very careful and purposeful about when you spend time on social media and how much time you spend on it and what you do when you are there. Associated with that, be extremely intentional in who you choose to spend your time with and listening to. Make sure you're listening to people uh, who are able to help you overcome challenges, who support you, who build you up. And then finally, make sure that you stay connected to your network. And Zoom calls are not the same as social media. Zoom calls during COVID are a far better way of connecting, I would suggest, or an actual face-to-face conversation on a messenger platform. That's connection. Getting dragged off down into somebody else's quagmire or beating somebody else up or viewing people beating each other up on social media is not connection. There's really nothing social about that. Put those three things together and when COVID is gone, be also intentional about connecting in an analog way with people that care about you and you care about them. Sharing your experience, sharing your story, sharing your journey, that will go an awful long way to helping to boost your resilience. Okay, that's what I got for today. I'd love to hear what things you have done that have helped you to build your resilience. Please share them because that's part of the fun of the network, right? I don't have all the answers. I don't have it all figured out. But as a group, we probably do have an awful lot of the answers right at our fingertips. So share your experiences. I'd love to read them. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, be safe, be well, and be happy.